Thank you all for joining us this evening. I'm just going to need to adjust my microphone slightly. I don't want heavy breathing noises. Somebody has decided not to fit my ear as well as usually does. Anyway, let's begin. So it's uh, 9th of October 2014. We're going to be looking at uh, training for traders. So tonight's training. We're going to have a look at the markets. We're going to have a look at uh, how are our markets changing. Well, that's a question we're going to be asking and uh, answering. Fundamentally, a quite basic assessment of it, but important enough to uh, trigger off some changes in, in what we do. So how do we adapt to changing markets? I'll we'll talk about missing an opportunity relatively briefly, and uh, then we'll actually uh, put missing an opportunity in context with today's live trades, or more, more today's trading session rather than today's live trades. And then we'll talk about how you should come and join us and learn how to trade well as well. So let's have a brief look at the markets then. Dow still open at the moment. Go back to a daily time frame. Uh, you can see here that uh, if you look on the yearly, if we put a yearly candle on, it's going to take us back some time. You can see here we're really struggling to stay positive this year, considering we've made some had some really bullish periods and we've made some uh, all-time highs. You can see we're, we've uh, only put on 0.49 of a percent. It's looking like a uh, spinning top for those who uh, like candle theory, albeit there's not really much you can act upon on a yearly time frame, but uh, you can see there that uh, we're barely sustaining those uh, gains we've put on in the year. Uh, it's looking uh, pretty bearish again today. I come down and retested that uh, full retracement of that last move that we've marked up with the uh, FIB. I've not actually looked at the market for the past couple of hours, but yeah, it's uh, breaking down quite nicely. I managed to get a trade on this afternoon that we'll, we'll have a look at, but it's uh, has sold off quite nicely. It's really threatening that low at 63. I wonder if we're going to close below there. So uh, yeah, interesting to see how the uh, year's ending. We may end up with a uh, negative year uh, in this case. Similar story on the DAX. Took a trade this morning on the DAX. We'll have a look at as well. Uh, nearly retraced uh, that entire thing. We've got Martin and Fib got a couple of areas of interest here. If we end up going down to this. Uh, uh, sort of 8913 area, 8900 area, potential long for us there. I assume we'll be gapping down tomorrow. I've not looked at the out of hours price action, but uh, again, if we go on the uh, yearly candle on the DAX, we are now in negative territory. We're again bullish, hit 10,000, and we've uh, we've come off. So we've had a couple of positive years, more, more than not over the past five years. So looks like we might be uh, heading back down as well. Uh, but it's uh, interesting to see, interesting to see uh, how the volatility is increasing as well, which is pretty much the uh, important things for us to look at. And of course, final look at the FTSE, uh, what we're doing. So the FTSE again reflects the DAX. FTSE not been as keen to uh, get carried away with uh, all-time highs, and it may be a case that it's just these, we're going to have a big wick. That's the all-time highs on the on the three market on the two other markets. So they're the three main indices we look at. Just interesting, just to have a, a yearly look at them. It's not massively significant for our intraday trading, but uh, it's interesting just to uh, we've had some very bullish parts of the year, and it turns seems that sentiment is uh, changing at the moment, and we appear to be technically uh, technically breaking down. So how are the markets changing from more of a, an objective point of view? And by that, I talk about over the past weeks and months rather than anything longer than that. More, more so weeks. That's more of an interest to us than uh, given our time frames we trade on. If we uh, have a look here, for those who know anything about the way we trade, we're very keen to monitor ATRs, and we use three of those. We use a uh, we look at a 20, 15, 10, and 5. You can see, particularly on the DAX, you're seeing some pretty big ranges on the DAX. If you're looking at uh, you know, past five and ten trading days, you're looking at pretty significant 140-point ranges with quite good consistency as well. We're not seeing uh, that we saw over summer where we're seeing some real uh, wider standard deviations. You're getting quite extreme small ones, quite extreme big ones, and it was uh, pulling it up in the middle. 
or averaging out in the middle of course and uh, whereas here we're seeing a bit more consistency and uh, so you've seen some very big ranges on the Dow as well yesterday's look at these well, well into the 200s of recent so we're starting to see that that ATR and volatility increase and the S&P as a reference point as well this is just a basic heat map this is available on our website every day um, it just gives you an indication of the range and volatility without range without volatility you can't really trade or you can I guess if there's no range and volatility there's certain ways you can trade but uh, but again that's taken into account the range and volatility that's some trades you can trade when there's not much range and volatility but uh, at the moment there certainly is so you know, you've always got to keep an eye and monitor those sort of things so what we can look from there is we can see there's an increased ATR we can see larger gaps which is no surprise you've seen the Dow sell off now it's probably going to mean there's going to be a decent size gap on the uh, FTSE and DAX uh, in the morning so there's certain trades that, that will benefit there's certain it won't we see greater momentum we're seeing uh, uh, levels break with greater conviction we're seeing stronger reversals we're seeing uh, just good momentum in a general trending high high uh, high lows lower highs lower lows type way in just a traditional uh, trending way the markets will do and most importantly we see opportunity with with changing markets like this you know we see opportunity when the markets go a bit more flat and less volatile but we also see it with here and that's because we're of what we're about to talk about now so how do we adapt well you've got to have the right strategies for the right market conditions that's fundamentally important I mean sometimes look at our trade log and there's probably about 15 defined strategies and some you know the frequency goes in and out depending on the market conditions we've got it's just like the tool for the toolbox analogy you've got to have the right tools um, it's, as, it's as simple as that really so what we're quite keen on at the moment is basic positional trading with rock solid uh, trading psychology and we'll give you a couple of examples of those in a moment when we look at our our live trades but there's no reinventing the wheel in trading uh, you know if you're doing support and resistance breakouts using indicators having lots of indicators having very few indicators price action trading basic positional trading there's not you're not going to be doing anything that no one else is doing or not done before the question is how well can you be dis how disciplined can you be doing it what skill have you got to recognize the opportunities and then execute them because like we always say hindsight trading is easy um, you know it's like here you'll probably get someone you'll find someone on Twitter and said oh I went short here and then the market held and I've held a short and I've made loads of money and it's like well the market didn't look like that time did it you know if you were going from if you were going from yesterday it was looking pretty bullish to held that level we got marked up there and it's held it so what's to say it wouldn't have challenged 17,000 so very easy in hindsight to talk about opportunities or oh, look at this breakdown here it could have easily taken that breakout and that's not the reality of trading the reality of trading is you've got to make decisions at the time which is uh, the difference between uh, people who teach and then people who actually do it as well. Uh, analysis, testing, reviewing and trading. Uh, we spent uh, hours and hours just going through charts and seeing what's working and what moving averages are working, what basic geographical and repetitive patterns are we seeing, wedges, door bottoms, door tops, breakouts, breakout Bs, where it gets retested, momentum, reversals, how the reversals work in, is it faking out and then holding back above, do we want to close the candle, etc, etc, and constantly the team of three of us are just going through these things um, and just making notes, looking at charts every day, marking the charts, so putting all this hard work in that uh, you know, obviously benefits us because we make money and benefits our members because we get to benefit from that, that's uh, hard work and uh, you know that's just that's just the standard life of professional trader you've got to work harder to uh, doing things and you can make uh, if you see you you know ATR volatility VIX I guess there are other measurements as well longer term measurements of momentum and volatility as well you can you can see when the last time the markets were like that or what was working in those conditions you know when, if you've got an extensive trade log like we have where we've got 408 of trades meticulously recorded over the past year and you know you can look at what well when were the ATRs the same as, as last year what what we're making profit from can we revisit that how are we trading that how can we make it better and you know just building up this uh, uh, portfolio if you like of uh, of uh, knowledge uh, in order to make the most of the opportunities and you know, one of the things that's quite difficult for traders you might have something that's working for you and uh, then the market conditions change and it stops working for you and it becomes very hard to give it up and you become very stubborn with it and you've you've got to be quite uh, nimble on your feet to recognize when something's not working uh, you 
know, there's a, for example, a very basic example is you might take a pullback to some moving averages, but because the volatility is increasing, the pullbacks are stronger, so you're getting stopped out before the market goes in your way. So a strategy that might be working one month may have to change the next month. You've just got to be nimble enough to recognize when um, it, your, your strategies are stopping working, and sometimes that can be masters just draw down. You might have a sequence of follows in a row, but and the reason isn't just naturally the drawdown of strategy, it's actually because the market conditions are changing and not suiting it. So, you know, if you recognize that, you've just got to not be stubborn and force it and just put them on the bench and uh, pick another suitable player if you like to take its place. So let's have a quick look at uh, missing an opportunity and what to do. There's lots of opportunities in the market, particularly when we've got a... Uh, a one minute momentum trade that we're going to talk about at the moment and it often throws up uh, multiple opportunities a day it can be five six seven and you have to focus and concentrate and sometimes it can look like uh, I mean there's reasons we, we don't take them but let's for example say that uh, this if this weren't in the you know that could have been a legitimate opportunity for a long there pull back to the moving average after making a new high there were reasons we didn't take that one um, but you know you can look at a chart or you can just see that one go and you, know, you may have had an opportunity to get along there, make 10, 15 points, which is what we'd probably want for a one minute little quick in and out trade. And you can miss that, for example, and then when the next time you get a moving average pullback here, which wouldn't have yielded as many points, you may have ended up break even at the end, but because you missed out on the first trade, you're hesitant in taking the second one. And, uh, you know, when you're trading on an intraday basis, no matter how good you are, there are going to be opportunities that uh, you miss for whatever reason. Uh, it's as simple as that, and, and you've got to learn how to deal with that. And, you know, how that, a uh, couple of things that help with that. You've got to remind yourself the market will always be here. The market always needs to move, or people can't make money on, on you know, the, the smallest retail scale or the largest uh, scale of in, investment banking and hedge funds and institutions. The market needs to move, and it will always be here. So don't worry about it. And, and some, you know, you, if some symptoms of that, if you can't pull yourself away from the market, because you think you're going to miss out. I remember years ago, I uh, had a good trade in the AM session. It was it was in high volume hours between eight and ten o'clock on the FTSE. Good trade, made some good money when I was starting to increase my leverage. And uh, I went to the gym after, almost as a reward because I find training keeps you disciplined anyway. And that was the first time I didn't feel like I was missing out. I'd usually watch the market after 10 through 11 and 12 when it was all choppy and low volume and rubbish and often give my money back. And that was the first time I remember not caring what the market had done. Now it's just second nature. I couldn't care less what the market's done. Made a, made a points, made a money today. And I've, I you know, I couldn't care less what the Dow's done later on. It sold off quite significantly. But do I feel like I've missed out? You know, it probably were, probably was a breakout strategy we could have taken today. Um, even in after hours, but do I think like I've missed out now? Of course, you've got to balance that with the amount of time you need to focus, and obviously the benefits of trading are having lots of time to yourself. You know, what's better than trading 8 till 10 and then 2.30 till um, 4 o'clock and then going and doing something else? That's, that's the way you want to live your life when you're trading. You want as much time as possible. The fear and regret of missing out will destroy your trading. Um, it's one of the biggest... Uh, psychological flaws. The reason I've spoken about it today was having a chat with some, one of our members on Skype about this uh, a couple of over the weekend actually, about uh, how they uh, feel like they've been missing out and if there's an opportunity it wrecks the whole day and a lot of traders have been there. But if you if you can't do what you need to do, and we're not going to go into the uh, psychological work you need to do, if you don't if you don't uh, master that and address it then it will destroy your trading because it will make you revenge trade. You know, it, just, it will make you uh, as we demonstrated on that DAX a minute ago, you won't execute the next trade because you'll feel like you've missed out on the other one. And, you know, that still can be quite a testing thing. Uh, you know, you, know you, you, always think, you always think the market's going to be against you. You might see a couple of setups work and you've not taken, then you take the one that loses. But that's just the nature of probabilities and you can't let that thing get to you. You can't, uh, have, well, it says chance the past. That's meant to be change the past. You can't change the past. Type in rather quickly. Um, so, you know, once an opportunity is gone, there's nothing you can do about it, so it makes no sense to worry about it. That's not how we work. We work by association, the most immediate, uh, you know, the things in our past, particularly the immediate past, we're likely to think will affect the future, and that's a difficult thing in trading, because trading doesn't work like that. The market doesn't care 
that's what's happened. It only matters what happens in the future, whereas our brains aren't wired to look like that. However, you can use it to benefit the future, though. As I say, when we when we do our reviews of our charts, I'll just get here. Quickly get here couple of charts up of just an example of, of uh, how we do our review mechanisms. Um, just bear me one moment. Let's get one. So this is how we go back and this is for one of our, our strategies at the moment. This is how we go back and, and review it, mark up the charts on a daily basis and talk about uh, the opportunities that could have been taken, why I may have taken them, why I may not have taken them, the advantages, and then noting what certain indicators and things are showing. So this is a constructive way. And when you just first trade in a strategy again or develop in a strategy for the current market, you're going to miss out on opportunities because you're not going to recognize them all because you haven't developed the strategy as much. But rather than, uh, rather than you know, regret them, turn it into something constructive, say, well, well, okay, I missed on that one, what were the signs that I could have recognized that, what would stop me from taking that setup, and, and this is the way you can let the past affect the future by doing it in a constructive, and we've got just hundreds of these for different strategies, just marked up the charts, and just looking as, as reference points, that's some of the background work we do, just to give you a quick insight, but that's just an example of how you how you can use missing missed opportunities to benefit the, benefit the future. So let's have a look at uh, the trades we took today. We're going to go through these in real time. Got through the most of that PowerPoint relatively quickly, but this is the more, more interesting stuff, and this will raise some uh, relevant trading points. Uh, give me two seconds while I get this ready. So we took two trades today. We took one in the AM, we took one in the PM, and uh, these, these strategies are sort of the ones that are coming out because of the increased ATR and things like that. So uh, let's just have a uh, quick look at these. Not a quick look, we'll have a detailed look at them. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see that. That's our uh, that's our uh, recording of today's session. This is this is a, what we record our live room. This is what's projected to everyone who joins our webinar software that you've joined now. It's sort of a screen within a screen, but that that's how we display things, and uh, so people can see what we're doing. We've just got a, we're just waiting for a uh, uh, momentum pullback here. Uh, looking to get in here when pullback to that moving average and uh, hopefully see some further downside momentum. That's one of the pivots there. I'll put the chart up as well. So it's all good and well seeing the trades in hindsight. What time was that? It was uh, 9.31. Okay, so I'll just go back on this chart. So it's very easy to see in hindsight, say, oh, look, well, excellent. you only got a pullback there to you. You could have gone short there, but oh, you might not want to go short because it goes up and it's actually a break-even trade, but it's just going to show you the uh, management and, and importance of it. So it's very easy in, in hindsight to look at a chart and see what you could have done and should have done and things like that, but it's a lot more difficult to actually take trades at the time, and that's why we record our trades and obviously take them out at the time. You'll never see us talk about things in hindsight or retrospect. So we're just waiting for the market to pull back here. We've got two accounts here running a room account here. We're running one of our personal accounts at the top here, and we just put the PL on there just to um, give you a reference point for the sort of sizes we trade these strategies at. That's £30 a point on the DAX. This is £10 a point on the DAX. And uh, so, what we're looking for is a pullback to the moving average, and then we're looking for a uh, at least 10 points out of this trade. So, we're just putting our limit order uh, in a position that we're happy with. So we get an initial amount of profit. We see about £100 profit on the uh, £30 a point. And uh, so what we're looking for constantly is, is a basic momentum trade on a one-minute chart. It's quite quick, quick in, quick out. It can be as well. So you've got to make sure you're ready to kill the trade uh, when it's appropriate. And uh, you've got to make sure you've got the right psychology. And the benefit of trading like this, and the reason we trade in front of our members like this, is if you can, if you can trade this sort of strategy well, then you you know this is all the trading psychology you need because this is fast in fast out this is like all the trading emotions rapidly at once you know it can quickly be a winner quickly be a loser you might have to quickly kill it you have to quickly think about where your validations and where your stops are and things like that and, and, and you know and it's very quick fire stuff and I'm saying to our members that just watch us trade this for a month uh, and you know see how we manage it see how we take losses see how we take wins on it and it'll be a good demonstration of uh, the way you need to trade in order, in order to be profitably, but the, anyone who can master sort of quick fire one minute entries like this will uh, set themselves up pretty well. Um, so quickly, already in this trade, we've only been a couple of minutes, we need to decide 
you know, where does this trade become invalid? Bear in mind, we're looking at 10 points either side on the DAX. It's not particularly, we've got a stop up here, but do we need a stop up here? You know, we look, if we're looking for technical pullbacks to the moving average, they move away pretty quickly. You know, you saw here, moves away. So it moves away pretty quickly. So we don't want it hanging around. It's a quick momentum strategy. So if we start breaking back above up here, you might say, well, that's pretty tight. Well, it is pretty tight. But when these go, they go. Then we don't, we're not really interested in the trade because we're just looking to get on the momentum. The whole point of a pullback is you're getting the best possible entry. Sometimes the market moves away from you, and that's fine. That's no problem. Um, so we're always there. Got a deal ticket set ready to close it. Like so. Keep in mind these are two separate accounts. This is one of our personal accounts we trade in the background VTX, but in the room we're currently using IG probably primarily because we can just show the uh, we can just show the uh, things on the uh, spread betting chart a little bit easier for people for our members. That's the reason we use IG because we can use Pro Real Time. But personally, we use VTX as we get slightly better executions. But um, so you can see we've brought a stop in. So that raises an interesting question about risk reward. Well, we initially had a stop and limit at 15.15. So for the first two minutes of this trade, well, we would probably ne would never let it get to 15. But let's say theoretically, you've got the risk reward of, uh, you know, you're risking 15 points. But within two minutes of the trade, we've already defined where we don't want the market to go and where invalidation is. So we're saying we don't want the market to go above here, so we bring a stop in. So that's not strangling the trade. That's legitimate invalidation for this time frame, for this sort of trade. So if the market breaks above, then want to be out of the trade, but now we're risking like two or three points, um, which is tight, but you know, that's the sort of tightness you need to deal with. And if you get good entries, that's the sort of tightness you can deal with on this on this trade. So we're, we're pretty happy with that. And so the risk reward of a trade isn't just what it initially is. You can bring your stop in and look for invalidation. Even when you're in a winning position, you can very quickly um, consider you, know, you need to be considering where invalidation is. Where don't I want the market to go? Or where will the mar if the market goes, where will it show me my trade no longer has an edge? And uh, you know, it's good practice. It's doing this all in very, very quick time. It, it's very good practice, and you can trade in any time frame if you can do this. If you can think, make good decisions, get a master your psychology on a one-minute chart, you can do it on anything. You know, I genuinely believe that. Uh, so, looking reasonably good there. It's broke the low. I've seen about what, 126 quid on, on the top, but nowhere near enough sort of money. 135, 150. But that, you know, we don't snatch profit. We're not even bothered about the money. I mean, this is the most important thing. Here is the point. So I actually like that because it shows points. It doesn't show pounds. So you don't worry about your pounds. You need to get that. You need to get that bloody pound symbol or euro symbol or dollar symbol. You need to just worry about points. What points are you risking? What points are you making? Because trading is a numbers game, and the best traders can reduce it to a numbers game. So I don't care. I've seen I don't care. I've seen 150 quid at the top. It doesn't you know, it doesn't mean anything. The fact I've only seen a few points means I'm not ready to take profit there. So what we're seeing now is we're seeing the market start to break back up, and we're starting to see well, is there really a continuation of momentum here? We've got you know that wick there that was looking promising because it had just taken out that low there. You know. Idea we would want this next one minute candle to carry on down here. That would be the logical pattern of momentum. But because we haven't got a magic crystal ball, we don't know. So all we can do is control ourselves and control where our invalidation is. So now we're, we're preparing to get out of this trade. We do have a stop. Necessarily mean we need to take it there. And uh, you know, there's two types of invalidation. There's a level invalidation. If it goes there, I don't want to be in the trade anymore. And there's also time invalidation but that broke back above so we uh, we took that loss there which was practically break even but if we have a look on the uh, uh, DAX chart there it actually went up a, a fair bit higher as well Got out around here went a bit higher it came down eventually but you know it's careful not to get hindsight by she made decisions at the time based on invalidation and based on levels you know you don't worry about what happens you know here, 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 and eventually it goes down. That's not a problem. You just wait for the next opportunity. You know, you don't, don't worry about what happens next. So in the AIM session, we had a break-even trade. I think I lost 0 0.9 points or or something similar to that. So absolutely, absolutely nothing. Practically a break-even trade. Okay, here's the trade in the PM session on the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. So again, let's have a look in hindsight. What uh, what what we have a, what we have a look at? We just get a Dow chart up. One second. Make sure that fills the screen appropriately. There we go. 
Uh, where am I? Okay, so we had the Dow here opening early doors. Let's go on to a five minute chart. This was a five minute time frame trade rather than a one minute. Um, so we saw the Dow coming down here, broken down. We saw it hit the pivot and we're thinking mm, that's very, very nice and technical. It's the pivot to an absolute tick. It would have been quite aggressive, but you could have gone long there, made the you, know, you would have made thirty points if you'd held, but that, that's quite aggressive to be fair, the way it was the way it was selling off. But we did think it may hold here. But so do you feel like you've missed out on opportunity because you could have gone long? No, you don't really. Then it comes down, test it again, we have a slight higher low and higher high, which uh, would indicate the market may carry on up. It didn't, it carried on coming down, so you know we don't we don't worry. Uh, right, a second. Let's try again. And then the market, the market's bothered to go all the way back up here to 16,934, and yet it's still not got the energy to get any higher. And then the sellers have come back in the market, come back below the moving average, got a moving average cross here as indicated on the MACD. We're starting to see some downside for momentum as indicated by the MACD. So we're thinking, right, if this pivot goes now, it's going to pop and it's going to go a decent amount of amount of time. So, you know, let's get an order in the market um, and uh, see see what opportunity we can you know, see what opportunity is offered uh, a 20 point stop that's all we need on the down to show us we're invalid in case it comes again but we're thinking it's quite probable to break here we're seeing some good downside momentum the MACD is indicating that steepness of the moving averages is increasing we tested the pivot now this will be the third test including that one there that was fractionally above I think there's a good chance it's going to come down so we uh, put our order in the market at uh, 82 spot one on the, the uh, sell stop order so you can see here, this is what it looks like on the, uh, at the time of the five minute chart. They've got the one minute chart there just to get a bit more detail. And we're also looking at the S&P as well, because if that goes through its pivot, but you'd like to see some decent downside momentum. This is quite nice, what we saw here. Got a nice little stall above the level. It came, we didn't want it, it came down, sort of last people, I guess, were getting out, or the, uh, you know, the, the people getting out of possibly some short positions and just seen this little bounce here and we're thinking that's great we, that was a really nice indication that this may have gone here the fact that's bounced up because if it does end up doing a full reversal again then we don't get in the market because we've put our order in the right place we were close to getting triggered and had we been triggered it wouldn't it wouldn't have been an issue we'd have uh, still been in the trade because it, it wouldn't have come and hit a stop but it would have been mightily close now so we're quite happy to see that and you can see here a little bit more detail on the five minute chart we've laid another wick that's the third test so you could consider on the one minute chart this is going to be the uh, fourth test so we're just waiting patiently see if the market gets us in but like I say seeing it stall and not making a new low or making a fractional new low it did make a fractional new low and not triggering us is absolutely ideal and we're quite happy with that and you can see how hard we're working our strategies we're just letting our members know here we were in the background doing some strategy work but we still have time to take a trade This is your ideal scenario for a breakout, just stalling below the line. And you've seen it, it's looking a little bit weaker, a little bit weaker, and we're watching this in real time. And again, this is the benefit of recording trades. You can see what decisions you made at the time, not what you made in hindsight. And also, the reason these videos are so good is you get to see how it feels at the time as well. So we're coming down now, we're holding below 16,900. You might see a little bit of discrepancy here between these two uh, different charts. That's the real market, as in data from the actual exchange. This is the spread bet market, so these will be slightly different to one another. But when you'd see more interested, you want to see a low on the spread bet market rather than, and then the uh, sorry, the real market, and then the spread bet market will follow. What the details of the benefits of that. Seeing the S&P make a new low, slight concern the S&P is not broken its pivot. But if you're looking for uh, levels you can on, on indices and stuff like that. you can always find reasons not to trade sometimes you just got to get into it and not worry about it 20 point stop five pound a point on the room account 100 pound risk uh, 30 pounds a point on one of our personal accounts which I think yeah 600 just couldn't work it out in my head so we're looking for about one hour we most of our very rarely do our trades end up taking a full stop so you know, if we take one hour from a trade for the initial risk award, we're quite happy with that. So we can see the real market. We're holding a little bit above on the spread bet market. You can see it comes up quite, we get a few points there. This is a personal account up here. 
but the real market's holding below. The spread betting market's messing about. That's not an issue for us. We couldn't care less about that. You can see. But the real market, look at this nice solid hole below the level. Big, thick, solid five minute candle. Just holding below the level. Great indication for us. Don't care what that's doing because that's, like I say, spread bet market. We're more interested in the real market. And then you're thinking, well, this is looking heavy. This is good. It's about to break the 59 EMA. Uh, exponential moving average. S&P is looking heavy on the right hand side. And with the Dow, very quickly you can find yourself in a pretty decent winning position because when it moves, it moves. So we're quite happy with just with, with just uh, 20 points of profit here, but at the same time we're going to give it the opportunity if it really wants to move. You know, 30, 40, 50 point move on the Dow can take seconds, uh, well, you know, at least or even minutes if you like. In, in particularly with the volatility in ATI, you know, we're seeing 180, 200 odd points movement, so. It doesn't take much. The next five-minute candle could easily lay a 50-point move for us, which would be great. But at the same time, I'm quite happy just to see one hour. So starting to see some lower lows here. Next five-minute candle is about to get printed on the real market. So remember, we're looking at different data here. One minute on the left, five minute here. So what we want to see for the next five-minute candle is we want to see a new low. It's opened at a new low, very slight gap. And we're wanting to see the continuation of this thickness, big, thick, solid candles is what you want to see with momentum. That's a great indication of momentum. You don't want to see wicky, messy about, choppy stuff. You want to see big, thick side momentum candles. So here we are. We see a nice continuation, and quickly we're starting to get about we're still about we're about 20 points up there. Slight different uh, different prices on the, the spread betting market, and sorry between the two different brokers, but they pretty much catch one another up. Most more importantly. We're up 18.2 points. Are we going to let a trade that we're up 18.2 points go offside? Of course, we're not going to do that. We're going to continue with, you know, we're going to protect our, our winnings here. So very quickly, we've been in the market, what, two or three minutes. Very quickly, we're in a risk-free trade, short of any obscene slippage or anything like that. And that's really important for us is to get in a risk-free position. Professional traders manage their risk. Even though the market's going in our favor, and we're seeing some pretty decent profit. I think we've probably seen about 500 quid up top, um, 100 quid on, on the room account, you know, 20 odd points. We're not thinking, you know, very easy to get greedy and forget about it. And if the market comes back on you now, you can get mine, you can get, you can freeze and think, oh no, I've, I've lost all that money. But straight away we're thinking, right, we don't want this market to come back on us. Let's get a stop in, in that break even, slightly positive, or maybe a plus one position, um, you know, beyond the spread. Let's make sure we protect it. And what a great position to be in a risk free trade. Now we can concentrate on taking some profit if we want to. Like I say, we're quite happy with a quick 20 points, but at the same time, we want to give the market an opportunity to move. Uh, what we see here is the S&P pivot's not even held, and the S&P is a pivot monster. It tends to hold them very well. So that was a good indication. So that was about the max profit we saw, I think about 24.2 points, which equated to about 630 quid on at 30 pounds a point. And, you know, at this point, I'm not being greedy, you know, I could take profit, I'm prepared to, but at the same time, I'm not going to strangle the trade. If this, you know, if this really wants to start getting some momentum and we start seeing some big moves, then it can crack on, it can move, it's no problem. See 40 points, I can scale out 50% because then that means I've taken one hour. Um, you know, so, you, you know, these things can happen quickly and you've got to have, you've got to have an idea of how you're going to take profit before you get into a trade. You don't want to be flapping about and, you know, at the same time, the balance was giving it a little bit of opportunity to really get going, but at the same time, we didn't want to uh, let it start retracing, which it which it, which it can do as well. Uh, it can retrace, come back, take your break even, then carry on back down. I pay myself as the money makes market available to me. It's one of the principles that Mark Douglas, the trading psychologist, said, which basically meant take profit when it's offered, providing it's not snatching profit. You know, there's no logical levels down. We did have a fib off the chart or a level down at uh, 53, but you know, there's not pivots, there's not any big support resistance that would mark up the blue line, so there's no reason this market couldn't have continued sailing down. So we're giving it a little bit of opportunity here. I want to see some lower lows on the one minute. Starting to see a little bit of stalling here. So I'm thinking, on this time frame, this is sort of the most opportunity I want to give it. So we're thinking, right, we're going to, uh, 20 points here, oh, we're going to take some profit here. So we decided to take profit there, um, 
which was reasonably well judged. Uh, can't you can see there. So, so that just gives you, you know different. It's the same. Like I said, this is the important thing. The points here, whether you're trading at five pounds a point, whether you're trading at thirty pounds a point, it's all just a matter of a psychology and account size. We treat a hundred quid of risk exactly the same as six hundred quid of risk because we've developed that psychology and we've obviously got pretty decent account sizes for our personal account. But we've built those up over time. You know, and, and we, uh, you know, we don't behave any differently from five pounds a point, one pound a point to thirty pound a point. And it's as simple as that. And when we get more, when we trade these a little bit more because of the current market conditions, we'll probably increase that leverage as well. But I'm not too bothered. I'm quite over five hundred quid. will do me for a day. Um, obviously, spread that into no tax as well, which is fine. Um, if you have a look at the market in hindsight. Uh, this was the trade. It went a little bit lower. It got down to the uh, 40s eventually. That was a nasty candle. You won't see that. So it got down to about 47. So we took profit a little bit earlier. Then it's come back up. It's not a particularly break. That's not a very technical breakout B. What I mean by breakout B is it holds below the level, then comes back down. That's not particularly technical. But you can see it's, it's sold off pretty heavily, hasn't it? But you know, do I feel like I'm missing out? You know, a few times 30 by. Uh, my little bar. You know, where did we get in here? Times 30 by 200, you know, which is silly, a silly thing to do. You know, how much money could you have made? But, you know, I'm, I'm a bothered about that. You know, do I expect to take a six grand move <laughs> on the on the Dow? No, of course not. I haven't got a crystal ball. But this is sort of hindsight nonsense you'll get from people. That, oh, look at that. If it held it, you'd have made a six grand at 30 pounds a point. It's like, you're an idiot. That's not it. That's demo account, and you just keep holding them, and then... Showing the ones that win, but that's that's not how we trade. You know, we, we, we trade at the time. We're quite happy to get a quick, nice one hour, quite happy to make some decent money. And uh, that'll do. So we had two opportunities today. Because we managed our risk in the first one, it was a very small loss, practically break even. And we had another opportunity the af this afternoon. Dow offers a nice one, and, and we took it. So, you know, two trades is probably a bit on the low side for us, but, you know, we found the markets were quite tight the same session, and they moved quite a lot in the midday session, but we're not around for that. We don't want to be trading these low volume times, so there's no surprise there. But, uh, yeah, we're pretty happy with that today, but I'm glad I've just, been, you know, that, that's how we trade every day in the in our, in our room. We, we take trades live in front of people. We demonstrate how we take losses, take wins, look for opportunities, mark up our charts. There's no hindsight stuff, and we just try and help people be better traders. You know, sometimes it's frustrating, sometimes it's absolutely brilliant. You know, we go through the same emotions as everyone else at trading. The difference is we we don't act the same way that most traders do, as in we don't let our emotions affect the way we trade. Um, because there's nothing wrong with enjoying trading, but you just make sure you don't get euphoric. There's nothing wrong with getting a little bit annoyed at the market, providing you don't revenge trade. You know that that's you can't necessarily control how you feel. You can sort of you know adapt and learn but you can control your behavior and that's, that's the, one of the best things we demonstrate so what I'd say to you is why not come and join us we work with uh, four different brokers all you literally have to do is go to our website trade room plus press free trial uh, we have a range to cater for everyone we have a uh, fin spreads account where you can trade at 10p a point you know, so you can risk a, a quid or two a trade if you if you knew and you're wanting to learn how to trade, and then you can go all the way up to big leverage on sort of ETX type stuff as well. So if you open an account through one of these links, you can get a minimum of two free months with us just for opening an account, and you don't need to trade until you're ready. And you can come in a live room, watch us go for a professional routine, watch us take trades every day, and uh, learn some stuff from us. It really is as simple as that. And the reason we trade in front of people is it keeps us very accountable uh, to our members. We trade as a team anyway, regardless of whether we project what we do or not. But we've chosen to project stuff. Um, so we'd uh, love you to come and join us. Um, we're also available on Skype. And we're available on uh, on our email address. Uh, info at tradewindplus.com. There's our three Skypes. And if you go to our website... You can literally press on one of these. It'll add you on Skype. So just go to Trade Room Plus, click on one of our names, add us on Skype, have a text chat with us, have a conversation with us one-on-one, -on -one, and we'll just talk about your trading. We're not going to give you any stupid hard sell or anything like that. We're just going to have an honest conversation about trading. Um, you know, your expectations might be wildly out of... You might be getting a reality check. Equally, you might be a little bit overly cautious, and you might just need a next help with a bit of a next step. You know, quite happy just to have an honest and uh, candid discussion about trading.
So uh, yeah, it'd be great if some of you could come and join us. Like I say, all you need to do is open an account with a broker. Um, you know, you don't need to risk your capital until you're comfortable. What what I generally say is, watch you know just watch what we do for the first couple of weeks, the first three weeks, the first month. Just come in the live room, watch our professional routine, look how we trade, see if it's something that you like and strategies that you think you could use. Come and interact with all our members. We have a big Skype chat room where everyone interacts and talks to each other about trading. And uh, yeah, it's as simple as that. We're the only people we know of that trade live in front of people using real money. You won't find any hindsight trades. It's all taken at the time, live. Uh, in front of all our members. Are there any questions, guys? I see there are a few. Uh, did you use any more indicators on that Dow trade? No, just just the ones we've demonstrated. Uh, we used just mainly the price action, the touches of the levels there. MACD was looking pretty negative across uh, all time frames as well, but it was mainly the, the touches, just a reoccurring pattern which you see levels like that, it's getting wedged down, you can see. If it had faked out, we may have been able to get a stop break even, we probably won't let a 10 point trade go offside. Equally, had it just come up and taken a stop, that's fine, that's the way trading goes, you've got to be able to take your losses as well as your wins. Uh, simple as that really. So that was a pretty good trade, we're happy with that one. Um, any further questions? There's a few. I've got yes, a new question. I don't know what question is there. Yeah, you've never thought about risk reward in that way. Um, yeah, that's yeah, that's understandable. It's a dynamic thing. It changes throughout the trade. You know, just because you've got a 10-point stop initially doesn't mean that your risk is 10 points for the entire trade, is it? You just look for invalidation and bring your stop in. As simple as that. You've got to make make sure you're not strangling your trade. Though that's a very easy thing that traders do is strangle the trades. Um, we don't do that. Do we scale out on momentum trades? No, we don't. We we can't. We do scale out on some trades, but not this particular strategy. We've just worked out from all the the expectancy of it. It's better just to take the whole chunk rather than scale out. You're on a one minute time frame. You're not going to be taking generally 30, 40 point moves where you're going to scale out on a one minute time frame. So quite just take a quick uh, 10, 15 points. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just coming off the back of a cold. Any further questions? Can I, uh, if I open up two brokers, can I uh, add up the months together? Yes, you can. You can, a person figuring that out. You can open, you can keep opening the brokers and just getting three months of us. Some people have been with us six months just through doing that, and they've uh, learned quite a lot and learned quite a few strategies. So yes, there's no reason you can't keep, you can't just open multiple accounts and we'll just add the, uh, add the months together. Um, we're certainly uh, going to be here in six months. Yeah, you can add us on Skype. We'll have a chat with you about your trading. That's no problem. The three Skype. If you go onto our website, like I say, the uh, the account registrations add up. Yeah, like I say, they are they are sequential one another. How many trades do you take a month? Um, Fifty to seventy. Probably going to be increasing with these uh, momentum and positional trades. I would say. Uh, we're just about to put reversals back into the pot as well. We're just doing a little bit more work on those over this next uh, week or so. Um, so yeah, we do. We take a, we take quite a lot of trades. It's very very. It's very unlikely we're not you're not going to find an opportunity in the morning or afternoon. Uh, for those who've got clicky fingers, it might be best just to be able to take trades that actually have a plan behind them rather than just trading for the sake of it. Very easy to take uh, unplanned trades if you, unless you can take planned ones, then you've got a reason to get in. Um, but. Yeah, the one minute is fast, but uh, like I say, the the good thing about uh, the good thing about the uh, one minute uh, trades is that you psychology you get to practice your trading psychology very very well. How do you decide twenty points as a target? It was uh, it was it was fundamentally the the one to one risk reward ratio. We did have levels that we did have a level, but it wasn't marked up on the chart. It's sort of 53 that we might have found some support from as well that we initially did. So it was mainly just mainly one R for that one, wasn't it? When do you plan the next day's trades? We plan them in the morning. We uh, we start at uh, we get up at 7 a.m. Michael and I'll have a conversation and planning session until 
uh, approximately 7.45. We will then come on the microphone just as I am now, talk you through our trade plan uh, until 8 o'clock, and then we'll execute the trade plan. Some trades won't be planned for. Uh, well, they will, because we'll be avoiding areas, but like the one-minute momentum trades, they can they can crop up relatively quickly, so they'll be planning during the sessions, whereas more longer-term key support and resistance levels will probably be planned beforehand, so we tend to, we do the plans at the time. We mark up our charts of what we're interested in with uh, text and graphics, lines, boxes, and other stuff, and so we tend to plan there. We do, we do have a look at stuff out of hours as well and look at longer-term things, but we don't... Yeah. We, we, we just brief members at the time. To take a uh, do you use volume percentage R for oversold or bought? No, nope, we don't, Roger. That's not that's not an indicator we uh, we have in our methodology. There's plenty, of, as I'm sure you're aware, there's, there's loads of uh, indicators. I know RSI is obviously a very similar one to that as well. Uh, but uh, that's just not one that's in our methodology. We're not, you know, we, we're very careful about what we put into the decision making part. We only put a certain amount of indicators in. Um, if we, if it's simple as that. Uh, a lot of people can over indicator if you like, and you can find a signal to tell you anything. But uh, if uh, if it doesn't help with a, we are, you know, we've got to be very very critical about your decision making. And there's no, like I said, there's no right and wrong. The only right and wrong in the markets is to consistently make money. But uh, no, that's not that's not one we use. Could maybe in the future, you know, we do when we do look at mechanical things. Maybe we do. Um, do you take a longer term view or just short term? We. We're doing a lot of short stuff at the moment, Tom, but uh, we also are looking at uh, some longer-term things as well. We did do some longer-term daily options and things like that, but they're a bit more weekly options, but they're very, very different. As anyone knows about options, they're all completely made up on the whereas the real options are monthly and things like that, and it's it's a lot diff a lot more difficult to spreads and things like that. But we do take some we do take some longer-term views as well, and if we're starting to see this sort of uh, increase in ATRs, there will be opportunities to hold and take some uh, overnight trades and things like that as well, once in a probably a scaled out and safe position. Uh, markets are often unpredictable. When would you not trade? I heard if choppy, better to stay out. Um, we wouldn't trade if there well, depends on depends on the strategy. Let's do, let's just keep it in today's context. Moment these these at mark these positional trades that we're actually in the market for stop loss as opposed to binary options, tunnels, ladders, or other uh, instruments you can make money. We wouldn't trade over major news uh, with these sort of strategies. We wouldn't trade on a bank holiday. Um, we wouldn't trade in certain areas of the market if it's just been flat and chopping it all day, like you say. Um, so that, that's the only predefined ones is mainly news and bank holidays is when we wouldn't trade. Certain times of day we wouldn't trade and things like that. So that, that all goes in our plan. But, you know, the flat and choppy market can very quickly turn into a trending market on, on the time frames that we're looking at. So we tend not to try and prejudge that much. We just let the market show us what it wants to do and try and make the most of the opportunities. Do you trade currencies and commodities? No, we just trade uh, the DAX, Dow, and FTSE. Um, the strategies would work on other things, but you know, it, master of jack of all trades or or master of a few. That's the balance you've got to make. Um, simple as that, and believe me, the focus uh, it is intense enough to focus on three indices, uh, particularly when they're all open in the PM session. No, although the FTSE is relatively slow, the DAX and Dow particularly the Dow, is pretty monstrous uh, at times, so you've just got to really focus on that sort of thing. Any further questions, guys? Thank you for your interaction. It's really good. I'm starting to lose my voice, but it's all good. Does anyone, uh, you know, does anyone trade like this? You know, do you trade these positional things? You know, do you have a plan? Do you have a structure? Could you benefit from seeing guys who work so hard and trade prefer and, and, and you know, trade profession. Ask yourself that, even if you have got a range of strategies, would it hurt you to come and see how someone else trades? Would it hurt to see how else someone cuts losses, deals with frustrations of the market, has a plan in place, goes through a professional routine? You know, adults adults like work, role, you know, the way adults learn is, is often through role modeling. Will it help to uh, see three people go about work as a team? You know, think about trading. How, how many banks and institutions do you think work in isolation? They don't. They work as a team. They've got risk managers. They've got analysts. You know, they've got they've got the uh, head traders, lead traders, the prop traders, market makers, all working as a big team. You know, 
you've been mad to work as your own as a trader. That's why we work, we work as a team, and we don't just con we don't just include ourselves as a team. We include or count ourselves as a team. We count all our members as a team as well. Yeah, ultimately, we're just trying to make a profitable trading community. Um, you know, these trades, and people say, well, why do you want to show your strategies to everyone else? Well, we're not, like I said, at the beginning of the session, we ain't reinventing the wheel. You know, these, these are things that are done every time. The key is, and again, like I said at the beginning of the session, the key is how well you can master your discipline, how well you can cut losses, how well you can run winners, how well you can break the psychological barriers of risking 50 quid, 100 quid, 200 quid, 300 quid. You know, there's some trades that other strategies where we've been risking a thousand pounds could have easily lost that. Can you psychologically handle that? Now, they're the key things about trading. Yeah, we don't overly, overly worry about points. It's more the more just the, the leverage and things. So uh, that's about it. But uh, yeah, add us on Skype, guys, if you want to speak about anything. Come join us for a couple of months. See if we can help you. Simple as that, really. Um, unless there's any further questions, I will uh, bid you good night. Remember, you can uh, email us. Add us on Skype. Um, I'm going to uh, get going because my voice is starting to go. But thank you all for attending. I hope you got something out of the session. Any more questions? I think uh, Michael and Mark are going to be around to answer those. And uh, yeah, thank you. Good night.